And in another book they describe it, but there are more than 20 different mistakes. Over here it's described A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and over there it's a complete different orders with different names. What really happened in history? Is this the right way, or is this the right way? Both of them cannot be correct. God doesn't make such contradictions in history, in generations, in the right order. It's impossible. Here is an example from Matthew 5. This is what J.C. tells his student. Do not think I came to contradict the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to contradict. I came to fulfill. I'm telling you today, if heaven and earth will be destroyed, you can still not erase one letter from the Torah, even a part of the letter. They will all remain forever. Therefore, if someone will contradict one of the smallest commandments and will teach differently to others, will be cursed by the kingdom of heaven. Again, Matthew 5, 17 to 19 which means, according to the hero of Christianity, which is J.C. himself, no one of his followers is allowed to modify the one instruction from the Torah. For instance, his followers are not allowed to eat pork, because the Torah says it's forbidden. They are not allowed to violate the rules of the Sabbath. And many other examples. Obviously, we don't see Christians that follow the laws of the Torah. They have their own laws, which contradict completely the Torah. So what happened? If you're faithful to JC, why don't you listen to him? If he is the most important figure in Christianity, the mandatory thing would be that every Christian in the world, there's close to 2 billion Christians in the world, they will follow his instruction strictly. And yet we find that nobody listens to his orders. And it's clearly in the New Testament. This is, I gave two or three examples here. The truth is that I have hundreds of examples. And we don't have the time to show all of them. If you're interested, just go into my website, divineinformation.com, and you click the debate, and you watch a three-hour debate, and you're going to see many more examples of what human errors are considered. We move on. As one more last thing about uh, mistakes in the New Testament is that it says that the cave when Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is buried is in the city of Nablus. Shechem, Nablus. Uh, everybody knows that it's in the city of Hebron. What happened to God? He doesn't remember where is the cave of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Is it possible such a thing? Is it possible that in a book that claimed to be the work of God will be such human errors? And people as genius as they may be, they make mistakes, contradiction, because it's very difficult to write such a long book in one or two days. It takes weeks. And therefore, a person doesn't remember what he wrote a week ago, especially when he fakes this entire scenario. That's why it's full of human errors. However, when you review the 24 books of the Bible, from Genesis to the Songs of Songs, the five books of Moses, which is the main Torah, and then 19 other books who came after in a generation when the prophets were coming and adding more prophecies that God gave them, you will not be able to find any human errors. Now remember, the Torah is a combination of the written and the oral laws. Combination. You cannot understand one of the 613 commandments that the Torah gave the Jews without reviewing the oral laws. God separated between the written Torah to the oral Torah. The reason is because he did not want the entire world to have the secrets of his book. That's why he gave brief names of the commandments with no instruction how to do. And verbally he taught Moses how to do, what to do, and how to teach to others. The Jews kept it strictly all the years. It passed from father to son. It's very important to understand. The Torah gave 613 laws. It would be much easier to give an even number, 600, 700, 500. Why 613? The answer is the human body is a combination of 613 parts, 248 organs, 365 ligaments, which means if we review the Torah, we see 248 positive obligations, which means you should do, you should do, you should do. How many? 
248. Each one connects to one organ in a body. 248 organs, 248 obligations, commandments to do. How many ligaments in a body? 365 ligaments, the Torah says. And for each one of them, there is one restriction in the Torah. You should not kill, you should not steal, and so forth and so on. So it's a perfect match. Actually, the Torah says that first was the Torah, and then came the world. And God created the world based on reviewing the blueprint, which is his Torah. Torah in Hebrew means instructions. Instruction how to live, how to do business, how to get married, how to raise children, and many other instructions. That's called Torah. So we review the Torah. First, as I said, we have one Torah, not 150,000 and not even 200. It's one Torah all over the world. 304,805 ligaments. How do we know the Torah was given from God? Let's review it carefully. Please pay attention. When I come today to secular Jews, they don't keep any of the commandments and try to convince them to become observant of the instructions of the Torah. First reaction is, leave me alone, I'm happy with the way I am, I'm not interested to change, it's too difficult, you know. What would be the chance that I will speak to millions of people and uh, overnight all of them will become religious? I bring them a book, I say, God sent me, I'm the prophet, every one of you has to listen to me, here is the book, here is your copy. Everybody has to change from one side to the other, completely. What's the chance? Close to zero. Millions of people would agree right away. It's almost impossible. But yet in history, something like this did happen. Moses came to millions of people and he gave them a book and they all adopted the book and started to live according to the rules. How did it happen? We have to understand. We have to investigate. We use our common sense. If we review the 613 laws, we find, first of all, that some of them are difficult to keep. It's not so easy. And we also find that approximately 80% of them, not only we cannot understand in a human logic, it's actually some of them are against human logic. For instance, the, the entire concept of the sacrifices. A person make a sin, the animal supposedly paying the price. People cannot understand. Where is this? It's not fair. One commandment in the Torah, if you see a bird in a nest, get rid of the mother, send her away and take the eggs or the, or the chicks and put them somewhere and thanks to that you should have long life. Doesn't make sense. Nobody, first of all, it looks like cruelty and second, what's the connection between this to long life? Nobody understands. Make sure once a year you clean your house from breadcrumbs and every chametz, everything that made from the five kinds of grains should not be in your house for the, for the days of Passover. Nobody understands the logic. Many other examples. Some of the commandments are very logical. You should not kill, you should not steal, respect your father and mother. Everybody understands that. But for that you didn't really need Torah, it's common sense. I am talking about the major part of the Torah where most of it, it cannot be understood. And some of it, it's against our thinking. The answer to that is very simple. If Moses, God forbid, was a faker, or anybody who was trying to write the Torah, the first thing he would do, he will bring a very easy book to keep, not to make people rebel against him. He should make the people be interested to accept this change in their life. Why should they make it too difficult? Give five or six commandments. Make sure they understand that you're the leader and you're the boss here. They give you some charity, donations, whatever, and finish. Why you make such a hard thing? You're actually defeating your own purpose, if you're a faker. Second thing is, you brought some of the commandments that risk your life. I'll give an example, one or two. When Moses gave them the book, this is the only book in history that the book that was given to the public supposedly by God, right? Everybody claimed that God gave them a book after. But here we have millions of witnesses that are receiving a book from Moses. When they open up the book and they read, who are they reading about? About themselves. No other book 
No other religious book later address the people who are receiving it as part of the book. The Jews are the integral part of the book. Most parts of the Torah describing what happened to them in Egypt, in the exodus of Egypt, and even describing how they accept the Torah. If the hundred miracles that describes in the Torah, when some of them are against all odds, blood in Egypt, frogs everywhere, hail are falling from heaven, every firstborn Egyptian is falling and dying, the ten plagues, and the exodus of Egypt, the Jews are going through, and the Egyptians with their heavy army are drowning, and then bread is falling from heaven, and, and so many miracles described there. When the Jews receive the Torah, all they have to do is to find one human error in a book. Who knows better than them what really happened in reality? Since the book describing what happened to the Jews themselves, and they are the ones who are reviewing it now, the first thing they had to do is raise their hand, excuse me Moses, what is this dream? You brought us this book, you claim that God gave it to you, very fine. But when we review it, there are things that never happened to us. It says that we were in Egypt. I don't remember we were in Egypt. It says that God split the ocean for us and we went through. I don't remember such a thing. It says that I'm receiving bread from heaven every day. I don't receive it. But the most important critical thing here, that inside the Torah it describes that God is speaking to Moses himself. And all the nation of Israel is listening to this dialogue. If Moses was pretending that he's, somebody is whispering in his ear, and he pretends that he's answering back, yeah, you have the, you're right, maybe it's all a show. But here, inside the text, it says that all of you, all of you that I'm giving you today the book, all of you heard me, Moses, speaking to God. Yes or no? No other way.